Thomas and Friends Storytime. Based on the Railway Series by Reverend W. Audrey. Created by Britt Allcroft. Read by Mark Moran. Welcome to the Island of Sodor. A small, magical island surrounded by sparkling bright blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches, castles to explore and bustling docks where giant cranes lift and load cargo from large ships. There are also lots and lots of railway lines where engines work hard to deliver goods and passengers to their destinations. Today's story is about Percy and how he came to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Percy is a little green saddle tank engine. He has four small wheels, a shiny dome, a shiny brass whistle and a shiny black funnel. Percy is a kind engine who is always willing to help his friends. One day, the trains were late and the passengers were unhappy. There was trouble in the shed. Henry, Gordon and James thought they were too important to shunt coaches like tank engines did. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them, said Gordon proudly. Tender engines don't shunt. Sir Topham Hatt looked cross. We must all work together to make sure the railway runs on time, he said. If you won't be really useful, then I'll find an engine who will be. So the next day, Sir Topham Hatt went to the engine workshop, where he was shown all sorts of engines. Then Sir Topham Hatt saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. I'll call him Percy. Sir Topham Hatt took Percy back to the yard. The next morning, Henry, Gordon and James still wouldn't come out of the shed, so Sir Topham Hatt asked Thomas and Edward to run the line. And Percy can help too, he said. Edward and Thomas worked the main line, while Percy puffed carefully along Thomas's branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three big engines were being taught a lesson. Back at the shed, Henry, Gordon and James wished now they hadn't been so silly. And they wanted to show Sir Topham Hatt how sorry they were by working extra hard. Later, Percy took some cars across the main line to another siding. Then he ran back onto the main line and waited for the signalman to switch the tracks so he could go back to the yard. But Percy had forgotten to whistle. Edward had always warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle so the signalman knows you are there. Suddenly, Percy saw Gordon with the express charging towards him. Poop, poop, poop! Get out of my way! cried Gordon. Quickly, Percy's driver turned the steam on full and put Percy in reverse. As Percy went backwards, he could see Gordon getting closer. It seemed Gordon would never stop in time. Percy shut his eyes and waited for the crash. His driver and fireman jumped out. Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had managed to stop just a few inches from Percy's buffer. But now Percy was going backwards. And without a driver, he couldn't stop. Percy went faster and faster through Edward's station and then up Gordon's hill. I want to stop! I want to stop! He puffed as he passed the signal box. I know what to do, said the signalman, and he set the tracks to send Percy off the main line and safely into a siding, where Percy hit a bank of soft air. I've stopped! Percy puffed happily. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. At that moment, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy, he cheered. You got out of the way so quickly. You stopped a nasty accident. Percy continues to work in the yard, 
and always remembers to be careful when he goes out onto the main line to pull the mail train. And Percy and Thomas have become best of friends. All thanks to the day Sir Topham Hatt chose Percy to work on his railway. The end.